welcome to part two of G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert, uh, prospecting at Cajon Creek. And yeah, I'm at the spillway here, and that water comes through there pretty darn quick. Well, there's a, a little eddy right over here, and a bunch of big rocks, and then there's some stratification and deposits over there of big rocks, topped by some sand with black sand, and then there's tree roots underneath here, so I've been uh, sampling around here. I even just sampled some out of the bottom of the bubbler there. And uh, been running it through my 51 inch sluice box. This is the folding sluice box that I showed you guys in one of the earlier videos that I received in the mail. And uh, earlier, I was running that little modulus sluice box with the uh, classifier on top. And I do have to say that uh, although that's a sluice box that uh, actually does sluicing for me, I prefer something like this because it's larger, it's got more ripples, it's got the, uh, the, the rubber pad with the small grooves in it starting it all off, and that gives me a, a larger sluice box to process a lot more material in about the same time. I'm doing about 10 times the material in here than I am in that little one. But for any of you who want to get involved in sluicing, I would say that a little uh, unit like that wouldn't be too bad for you. It'd get you going. And then it would find your first uh, little specks of gold or your first little picker. You're going to say, oh my God, I think I got gold fever. And Bear warned me about that. Anyway. As you can see, the stream is flowing pretty decent. And uh, Andy sampled out from underneath that rock in the center of the stream there, or on the back side of it. And uh, it's just way too sandy over there. And some of those places over there, I stepped and uh, I want to show you. I'm using these uh, hip waders that I ordered online. They were $57 and change. And then I got these uh, rubbers. Andy spotted these at uh, Tractor Supply and they're large and wide and they fit over the stocking feet inside of these uh, waders. But uh, the stocking feet on these are made out of the material that uh, scuba diving suits are made out of. And I've been standing in this cold water and I mean cold water. If this cold water was any colder it would be hard water or ice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, everybody's going, oh. Anyway, but I've been standing in this water all day, and my feet are not even the slightest bit cold. And I am not the slightest bit wet, except a little on top of my hat that's coming from the raindrops that keep falling on my head. And just like a guy whose feet are too big for his bed, and uh, there's Andy up there waving. You can, you can see his hand just like he's always used to see mine, right? <laughs> anyway, that's what we're doing. And I've got to dig up another, yeah, I know, graffiti on the walls. Why? The IE stands for Inland Empire. But uh, why? You know, why? Just so you can say, I was there. Take a picture, idiot. So anyway, I'm going to get back to digging some more over here and uh, see what else I can find. Because uh, we've only been here a couple hours. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the last bunch of sampling there is starting to break down now and flow, flow away and flow through. So it's time to get more in there. And the washout on this is going to be very interesting. And I know that all of the samples that I pulled all came out of this one little area right here. So I didn't have to mark my buckets as to where what they came from. And I found a couple of nice big uh, chunks of uh, quartz that looked like they've tumbled a long way down the, uh, the mountain or the stream. And there's an interesting piece right down there. Let me get a little closer for a close up on that. Look at that one. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, 
Now, there's a lot of black sand in here. You can see right here, just in that little low pressure zone right there, is just full of black sand. And yeah, this, there's another guy, like I said, on the other side of the road over there, just on the other side of this tunnel. And uh, he's sluicing up there. I figured everything that he misses is going to come down to me. But, uh, yeah, you can see the eddy here and the, the way the water is slowly moving around. But if anything comes through there, I think it's going to go down through that percolation there and just drop down deep. And uh, not near any bedrock here that I can think of, but I do have big rocks with uh, tree roots there and there. And uh, as you can see, all of that is all fallout from when the waters were really flowing. And where all those bigger rocks are, that's an interesting place to start uh, sampling. Move the big rocks out of the way, get, up, get behind them like I did right there in that little hole. And I'm going to do that area next and see what's back there. Because remember, you got a sandbar like this that uh, was a low pressure area and all the high pressure is over there. So all of this stuff that's over here fell out. And the bigger rocks are all falling out through this section right here. Then as you go down further, the sandbar still goes, goes through the center of this and goes over to the slow side of the uh, stream, but it's all small rocks. A lot of black sand, a lot of regular sand, but all small rocks. So those travel further. The, the gold being heavy, like these big rocks, would fall out into a section like this on this sandbar. So I'm going to check a few places along this sandbar also before I call it quits for the day. And I just wanted to get a second video in because the first one was all about that sluice box. And I wanted to get a second one in about this sluice box. I remember these are both made by the same company. And... Uh, that's www.outdoorsupplyinc, all one, Outdoor Supply Inc, I-N-C, for short for Incorporated. And uh, I'll put that uh, link down in my uh, description, and you can go over and see if there's anything that you would like over there. But uh, I'm pretty satisfied with this uh, sluice box. There's a few things I would change on it. But uh, for the most part, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And so does that one. But that one is a smaller one, and that's for processing smaller amounts. This one's bigger and processes a lot more. I think the next thing I want to get is a high banker and work off of a high banker because a high banker works off height and going back and forth instead of down one long run. And what that does is it saves you a lot of space and you don't have to set it in the current and put big heavy rocks on it there. You set it off to one side and you have a little 12 volt pump that pumps the water up to the top. All right, everybody, that's all I got for today. Uh, I'm going to post these when I get back to the homestead and show you what we've been doing all day. And I got, still got to do washout before I call it a day on this. I'll uh, got my clean bucket up there. I'll get some water in there and take this apart, put all the parts inside the bucket, and then haul the whole bucket, water and all, back with me. And then I'll use that water to pan out while I'm at the homestead. That's all I got. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget your thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe. It's free. It's free. So get down and hit that subscribe button. What are you doing? Don't just sit there looking at me. You hit that subscribe button, get on my channel. And hit that little bell beside it so you can watch all of these exciting adventures that we're going to have this year at different locations. This is G-Bear signing off.